Good evening, race fans, and welcome to the Concrete Palace, famously known as the Monster Mile. From Dover, Delaware, in Dover International Speedway, it is time for the final race of the Challenger Round in the chase for the Full Throttle Cup for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series presented by Gary Mercer Trucking here tonight on LSR TV. I'm Jacob Seelman alongside Evan Pisoko as we have got an action-packed broadcast, 160 laps, 160 miles around the high-banked, very fast, one-mile concrete oval here in Dover, Delaware. It's bound to be an exciting night, Evan. We've got four drivers who, after tonight, their chase hopes will be over. Uh, three drivers fighting for those final spots to get out of 13 through 15. We know and Lester already out after missing last week. But tonight, going to be fun. There's still 15 drivers fighting for 12 spots. Yeah, and five of those cars from 10th on throughout position number 14 that are still up for grabs, Jacob, only separated by about five points. And this is Dover. It's known to cause some havoc. It's known to end up with some torn up race cars at the end of the night. So these guys are going to be on pins and needles all night long as they try to survive and this could be one of those races, much like Talladega, that's going to end the next round that could really throw a curveball and take some of these good contenders out of it because nobody knows what's going to happen here once we get to the end of 160 laps. No, we do not. And uh, it's a race where anything can happen, Evan. Uh, you talk about elimination races. This is a race that I'm glad it's an elimination race because of the unpredictability. You get Squirrely coming off turn two, coming off turn four. This track is narrow. This track is very fast. And if there's a wreck, this track's going to clog up in a hurry. And that could spell disaster for a lot of Chase Hopes tonight. Uh, we saw a big one happen last week in Loud, New Hampshire. Tonight, it's even more prevalent that that could come into play before the end of this one. Indefinitely. And again, we have another large size field here tonight. So far, 23 cars have put down a time in qualifying. It's not the biggest amount of cars that we've seen all season long. But again, this racetrack with the bank and the way it is, just a self-cleaning racetrack. If you get trouble off of two, off of four there, uh, there's not a lot of places yeah, to go to try to get Yeah, a lot left to have happen here. Oh, so much left to have happen. And, you know, Evan, looking at this... Uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. We know three drivers are not going on, and the question now becomes, who do we look at here tonight? Who do we think are the drivers that are in jeopardy of not advancing to this next round? Well, you got to look. Steve Gotch talks the first car, rather the last car in, in the number 12 spot. Only two points over Jose Gonzalez. You have Brennan Mercer there. Mercer's three points out of a transfer position. Then you have Brandon Peterson, Jason Lester. Those two cars well out of it. One of those machines obviously did not make a start last week, Jason Lester. So he's out of it. Peterson has a little bit further to go, but... I mean, you got to look at a guy like Jose Gonzalez. Has had solid finishes. He qualified right now provisionally in the number 15 position. I just haven't seen the consistency or the top 10 runs out of those teams that I think they're going to have to advance. But because this is the first round, you're going to get a couple guys that can get in just on solid finishes. But that's not going to fly moving forward. No, it is not. And taking a look right now at the points down the grid of 16. Eric Grundy is the championship leader on the provisional pole right now. He leads the standings by four over Adam Benefield. Then it is 12 more back to Rhett McBride in third. Jonathan Cadell fourth is 18 back to lead. Scott Simley tied for fourth right now with Cadell, but Cadell uh, getting the nod based on the better finish in the chase so far. CJ LeVere sixth. He's 26 back. Justin Wilson, he was the big winner last week in Loud. Picks up spots to move from 13th outside the chase to 7th. Pretty solidly in it right now. He's 30 back of the lead. Thomas J. George in 8th. Lost 5 spots last week. He sits 32 back. Dan Murray, 9th. He's 34 back. Scott Stenzel hanging on in 10th. 38 back. Nathan Little, 11th. Steve Gottschalk, 12th. They're each 39 and 40 back. You've got Jose Gonzalez, Brennan Mercer, Brandon Peterson. As you said, Evan, they're the three guys trying to race their way in. The biggest thing about this, though, from 7th all the way down to 15th, there are 21 points separating those nine drivers. 21 points, nine drivers, and only six of them are going to move on. And if you move further than that, only 
eight of those guys separated by 13 points. So if there's going to be pick strategy all that long. You have to assume we're going to see a decent amount of yellows. It is Dover. It is Monster Miles. So this is really going to be up in the air. We're going to see some guys getting desperate late in the race. We're going to be some crazy strategy calls. you got to take a look at a guy again like Steve Gottschalk who sits right now the last car and he's only got two points. That's two spots on the racetrack, Jacob, as we hit the grid. It's going to be a wild one here for 160 laps. Yes, it is. And as we hit the grid, let's take a look down. The Gary Mercer Trucking starting lineup tonight on the pole with a lap of 23.436 seconds. The championship leader all season long it is the Shell Pennzoil, number 94 Ford Fusion of Eric Brundy's. Alongside him in the number 85 Toyota, that's the fastest man in the chase so far, Adam Benefield. David Comstock coming off of a trip to victory lane. He was fastest in a practice session. He'll start inside row number two into the number three spot alongside him. How about Matt LaCrosse, the number 21 machine? Yeah, row three to the inside in fifth is the 96 of Mitch Rollo to his outside. One of the chasers, the snap-on Chevrolet, the number one of Thomas J. George. DJ LaVere going to be driving the number seven machine tonight. He'll start P7 on the inside of row number four alongside him. Nathan Little going to roll with the number four off in P8. How about two more chasers in row five? Starting ninth in the number 11, it's Jonathan Cadell. Tenth is outside the number 91, Steve Gottschalk. Justin Wilson into JGR entry is going to start in P11, the number 58 machine for him. Alongside him, going to have Dan Murray in the number 55 Toyota. Starting 13th tonight in car 68, it's Scott Simley to his outside. The lows, 48, that's Kevin Linden. Jose Gonzalez on the outside looking into number 26 Chevrolet will roll off in 15th position alongside him the 24 of James Robinson in 16th. 17th tonight the number 25 is Mark Bratcher to his outside one of the chasers mired in the 18th position the Mittler Brothers Chevrolet the number 42 Scott Stenzel. Brett McBride all but mathematically locked in the number two machine is going to start in position number 19 alongside him and rounding out the top 20 the 66 of Brian Harvey. 21st tonight, the 02 of J. Randall Watkins. 22nd, the Furniture Row Machine, the 78, Brandon Peterson. 23rd, the 07, Sherry Ann Mills. Last car to take a qualifying time in 24th, the 60 of our round one chase winner, John Higman Jr. Stephen Marinak will start 25th as the field rolls from Pitt Road. Brennan Mercer, the number 29 machine, will start in 26th. Michael Woolley is scheduled to start 27th, not on the racetrack. Corbin Hemstreet is going to start from Pitt Road. He'll schedule to start 28th. 29th, Rich Jett tonight, 30th, the 43, Doug Roth, 31st, the 81, Keith Brooks Jr., then Doug Wyatt in the number 9, it's John Wilco, Jamie Pitts, and Stephen Herring rounding out what is scheduled to be a 35-car starting field. Again, 160 laps, 160 miles, here at the Concrete Palace, it is the Monster Mile, where Miles the Monster can strike can chew up race cars and can bite you at just about any turn. The iRacing Ford First Mustang pace car rolls to pit road. We're glad you're with us on LSR TV as Eric Brundy's in the Shell Pennzoil Ford Fusion leads the field off of turn number four. He's on the gas. Green flag in the air as the 21 of Matt LaCrosse. He gets way loose and we're underway as LaCrosse falling back. Battle for the lead is in turn one. And Comstock's going to get to number two position from Adam Benefield on the bottom to the Monster Energy Chevrolet up the second. He mentioned the 20 to Matt LaCrosse. He was going the wrong direction. Mitch Roll is able to get around him for P4. Looks like LaCrosse will settle back in position number five. Thomas J. George behind him through three and four. Looking at this, already a lap complete. These laps fly by at just under 25 seconds. Brundy's to the lead. Comstock taking a look to the inside in turns number one and two as we got one car slow already down on the apron. That car out of harm's way, but it's Eric Brundy's, David Comstock, and now Adam Bent. And a feel in a newly colored number 85 machine there. Your top for Comstock applying the pressure. And that was the 7 of C.J. LeVere. He started from Pitt Road, so he will already go a lap down along with Corbin Hemstreet, the number 41 machine. Those two cars that round out the 32-car field started from the pit lane. You talk about Comstock. He rides right now into number two spot. Got about a car length up to Eric Brundy's. A lot of single file, but bumper to bumper inside the top 10 as Brundy's leads him out of four. Yeah, this time by three laps going in the record books. The Monster Energy Chevrolet just kind of lurking right there. It's Ford, Chevy, Toyota, your top three. So all three manufacturers represented up front early in the going. How about a call to Mitch Rollo, who's worked his way up to fourth in the early going. That 96 machine, uh, we've not seen a lot out of that car yet this season. 
Evan, but I'll tell you, Mitch Rollo, the last two or three races has strung together some really solid runs uh, throughout most of these events, and I'm not surprised to see him up here in the thick of things battling it out early. Yeah, I'm surprised that 96 and Mitch Rollo hasn't been to victory lane this, this season, and he has not had the consistency of, say, our race leader right now, Eric Brundy's, where you're knocking off top fives nearly every week. But we have seen that 96 Jake Chevrolet Jacob up front for a fair amount of these races and has just been unable to translate those into a trip to victory lane. So he rides right now before to get himself some help from having a top five qualifying spot. So keep an eye on Mitch Rollo because the 96 team, again, showing some speed here in the latter stages of the season. Absolutely, and right now these top six that we're watching have checked out by about a second and a half over Jonathan Cadell, the number 11 back there in seventh with Nathan Little, Justin Wilson, Steve Gottschalk on that train. It's about a six-car breakaway as they head back to turns one and two. Eric Brundy's leading the charge, but Evan, he has had heavy pressure from that monster Chevrolet. David Comstock has been laying on the rear deck lid of the 94. Your Comstock got down to that left rear quarter panel about two laps ago, going down at the quarter number one. Brundy's has been able to hang on to it. He holds about a half a car length gap that time by the stripe. Lap seven going to be in the books. Adam Benefiel has not fallen too far off either. You talk about his real speed dynamic Toyota. Top three now actually trying to put some time. Mitch Rollo did not have the best time through corners number one and two. Looks like we could have a battle for fourth brewing as Matt LaCrosse, the quick car Chevrolet, trying to close in on Mitch Rollo out of fourth and 96 with a good runoff. 96 got a great runoff. And I'll tell you who else got a good run off that 20 machine. As again, he pressures the 94 of Eric Brundy's. But you know, there's a reason, Evan, that that Shell Pennzoil Ford has led the championship standings virtually every week of this season. He has not flinched. He has not let anybody get inside his head. And it's why he's leading right now at Dover. Qualified on the pole, he is looking for win number five of 2014. He's already got the most wins of any driver in RSR Cup Series competition, and he's looking to add another one tonight as we're working lap number 10. Got a pass going on. That's going to be for P15. The 24 of James Robinson gave a little bit of a tap to the two of that big rod, rod, letting him know for the radio to just go to the inside. And not going to make that pass quite yet. They're going to be side by side through three and four as Robinson tries on the bottom. The two barely graze at the outside retaining wall. And it looks like the 24 of James Robinson will pick up position number 15 there about mid pack. So a few battles going on mid-pack as we continue to watch. Again, Mitch Rollo will wash up the racetrack in turn number four. That is again going to allow the 21 of Matt Lacrosse. Ooh, this is getting tight. Look at that. Lacrosse tried the crossover, no pun intended, as he looked to the outside. That didn't work, and it's going to allow the one of Thomas J. George to the inside off two. And George is going to have the nose down into quarter number three. He will get through and clear rather easily without incident around the 21 of Matt LaCrosse. And you mentioned that 96 just got sideways off of four. The one tried to capitalize on it, went to the outside and just overdrove the entry. It opened up the door for the one of Thomas J. George. And that's how we find Matt LaCrosse now back in the number six position again. He spun the tires on the start. So he's only gone backwards so far. Started P4, sits right now in sixth position. About a second off pace with our leader, Eric Brundy, who still is having to hold off that 20 of David Comstock, who continues to ride his bumper out of four by half a car length. Yeah, they've stayed pretty much like a trailer hitch. It's between the two of them since the drop of the green flag. Evan, one of the hardest things about this Dover racetrack, how much banking in the corners, a 20 plus degrees of banking, but even more so than that, these guys are falling about 17 feet into the corners, climbing that distance out of the corners. And when they drop that left front so hard into these corners, turns one and three at Dover, you got to be careful not to hit that seam where the apron runs into the racetrack. Otherwise, you could find yourself in a tailspin in a heartbeat. We saw a couple of guys there during the qualifying session just got down into quarter number one, a little bit hot, got the left side tires down on that apron. You can see the darker complexion of the asphalt there and caused them to go up the hill, did not get the times that they wanted. So it's, you can be a little lenient, but you 
definitely don't want to get down there, and that will not end well for you. So you have to be disciplined. Right now, you see the 15 of Justin Wilson gets down a little bit too hard. Left side tires get down on the apron. No harm, no foul, and he's able to drive it off the corner. But you don't want to play with fate in that regard. As it looks like the top two trying to pull away from Adam Benefield just a tad. They have about three tenths on him. That's not a lot of time. But David Comstock still applying the pressure. Half a car length off of Eric Brundies. Brundies has led all laps so far. He has done well. We are 16 laps in. That is already 10% of the distance here from the Monster Mile, working lap number 17 of 160. So still a ton of time left for drivers to make a move, but here's how they run right now. Eric Brundies is your race leader. David Comstock, last week's winner, rides in second. Adam Benefield is third. Mitch Rollo in the number 96 is fourth. Thomas J. George, one of our other chasers, completes the top five with non-chaser Matt LaCrosse in sixth. Jonathan Cadell, a chaser in seventh. Nathan Little, Justin Wilson, Steve Gottschalk, the rest of your top ten. All of those are chase contenders with other guys. Uh, Dan Murray in 12th, Jose Gonzalez up to 13th, uh, trying to break their way towards the rest of the party here in the top 10. But one of the chasers who is struggling early in the going that I've kept my eye on way back in 21st position, Evan, that's the number 42 Mittler Brothers machine of Scott Stenzel. He was 10th coming into the night. He has really got to pick it up if he's got any hope of advancing to round number two. And then Brennan Mercer too, the number 29 Gary Mercer Trucking Chevrolet who entered tonight as the number 14 seed and really it was only a three point differential or four points up to the 12th place seed who was Steve Gottschalk. He's riding back in 27th spot. That's not going to cut it if you want to be able to advance to the next round. The car that entered tonight on the bubble, we mentioned Steve Gottschalk rides right now P10. He had a very slim advantage over Jose Gonzalez by about two spots. He has Jose by about four positions on the racetrack. So Steve Gostock, although I'm sure he would like to be running a little bit better than the number 10 position, the number 91 Pepsi Chevrolet, he's getting the job done at this extent. Yeah, he is. He's doing exactly what he needs to do. And see, the thing with this first round, Evan, when we're going from 16 to 12, is these guys who know they can run consistently, top 10, top 12, they're not too worried about missing the cut. They know those kind of runs in this stage of the game that will advance them to the next round. When we go from 12 to 8, and especially when we hit some of these wild card racetracks coming up the next couple of races, it is going to get very, very, very dicey. You may have to be a top five car virtually every week to have a shot to advance to that Elite Eight. Change for position for the Number 15 spot, once again, Kevin Linden, the number 48 low Chevrolet is going to get around Rhett McBride. Rhett McBride had some trouble coming off the quarter number two. The 48 would complete that pass going down into three. McBride was not happy about the way that pass was completed over the radio, but they continue to ride right now. Rhett McBride has been gaining and then losing spots. He's kind of trapped around the number 15 position. Not the first time that, yeah, no, the 94, there's trouble in front of our leaders. Trouble in front in of the, the leaders? Keith Brooks Jr. That is going to make things very dicey and everybody looks like for the moment hanging on to it, but that was almost disastrous. That's the kind of situation you cannot have happen. If you're Eric Brundies, you absolutely don't want that to happen here at this race because he's not mathematically locked in, Evan. This is the kind of thing that if you're a guy on the bubble, like a Jonathan Cadell, like a Steve Gottschalk. You can't have that happen up in the top 10. Otherwise, your chase hopes could be over. And there's a lot of navigating lap traffic that's gonna happen at this racetrack too. And what happened was we saw Keith Brooks Jr. got sideways off the corner, actually went back up and collected the 43 machine of Doug Ross. So Doug Ross got a little bit of damage from that. You see the leader's gonna put the 07 to Sherry Ann Mills one lap down, but the issue there was Eric Brundies had no idea if Keith Brooks Jr. was gonna overcorrect, bounce off the inside wall, and come back up onto the racing surface. So 94 checked up, and David Comstock nearly pile drove him into the back bumper. He was able to get on the binders, not make any contact, but a close call for our leaders. Again, you said that quickly things can change here so these leaders can never really get into a rhythm you're always going to be putting lap machines down the next car that they will lap it appears is going to be up in front of them looks like Douglas Wyatt who already sits as the last car on the lead lap so they have a little bit of a buffer but if this thing cycles through to the point where we get green flag pit stops it's all that lap traffic that'll keep things interesting up front
Yeah, and Evan, that's another point that I want to get to is green flag pit stops. If we have them today, if we establish a long green flag run, and I would almost consider this a long green flag run. We're 28 laps into this race right now as they cross the stripe. This is longer than I expected we'd go to start this event at the Monster Mile, but it's very narrow getting onto pit road as well. You're carrying so much corner speed. How difficult is it to get onto pit road here at this racetrack? Yeah, you definitely have to consider it as one of the hardest pit roads to get onto. It's not uncommon to see somebody get on the binders and they, they'll just straight overshoot it. You'll get on the brakes, the car's not going to turn as much as you want because you have so much momentum going down into the corners that you overshoot it. And you're going to have to go all the way back around and that's not, that would not be the first track that we have visited so far this Jay Jacob where we've seen guys have trouble getting out on pit road. So it'll mean it'll have some cars being very, very conservative. They'll hit the apron going down into quarter number three. They'll have some guys trying to push that envelope a little bit more, which is where you can gain or lose maybe tenths or even seconds at a time if we eventually do cycle through to those green flag stops. And I think it was at Chicagoland yes. maybe that we saw the one of Thomas J. George have so much trouble while he was leading the race during a cycle of green flag pit stops. Uh, could not get it woed up and it ultimately cost him that race to John Hickman Jr. So we've seen this happen a couple of times, Evan, like you alluded to already in this season. And this chase as the leaders get very close trying to navigate lap traffic. Oh, that was tight. The 20 Monster Chevrolet of David Comstock almost got into the right rear quarter panel on 94 of Eric Brundy's. It looked like he wanted to shoot the middle and slam the door on him at the last second. Yeah, there's been some situations that have presented themselves to David Comstock that if this was later in the race, he'd shoot for that gap. You have to remember, you said we're right now working lap 33. Consider that a long green flag run for this racetrack because this is not an easy place to navigate in traffic. So the 20 machine has been taking it relatively easy, I think, riding around right now in the number two spot. He has let that out. He know that he's there as they go around the 81 machine uh, down that front straightaway. That is Keith Brooks Jr. You see the damage on his spy Chevrolet as he'll go six laps down. But I think David Comstock just taking it easy. You mentioned that he would end up losing that race. We were talking about Thomas J. George would end up losing that chance at victory lane trip to John Higgins Jr. David Comstock's the one that went to victory lane. How about the fact that two races into the chase, not a chase driver has gone to victory lane in either. Eric Brundies is hoping to change that here tonight with a very dominant race car working lap number 35 of 160. So quickly coming up on one quarter distance here at the Monster Mile for the Dover 160 tonight here for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series. And of course, after this, we cut the chase from 16 to 12 and move on to the contender round, Evan. And boy, uh, this is a round that I think scares some drivers. So uh, what are we most looking at here in the, uh, in the next round coming up after tonight at Dover that these guys are gonna have to contend with, no pun intended. Well, you're going to start off the most prominent type of racetrack that we're going to find. It's going to be Kansas and then Charlotte. Back-to-back 180-mile -back races at your 1.5 intermediate racetracks. Now, I said Dover could be a little bit of a wild card because it is the Monster Mile. How about Talladega? The Talladega 224 to close off the second segment and race six of the chase for the RSR Full Throttle Cup. Talladega, we're going to be throwing four cars out of that. Good luck entering that one. That's going to be one where these wins and getting a win and locking yourself into the next round is going to be so pivotal at Kansas and Charlotte because there's no guarantees headed into Talladega. No, and there was no guarantee just then in the battle for the lead. Eric Brundies and David Comstock nearly made contact again trying to work lap traffic. It's getting dicey and David Comstock trying to take advantage right here as these leaders continue to work lap traffic. And I believe that was one of our chasers, Evan. I believe Brennan Mercer just went a lap down. That was Brennan Mercer who goes one lap down. Right now he sits in the lucky dog position, but it looks like Brandon Peterson, another chase hopeful, is going to lose his lap at next handful as he sits in 23rd. Brandon Peterson entered 15th. Brennan Mercer entered 14th only by about three points for Brennan and a little bit more for Brandon Peterson. He entered 11 back rather, but Steve Gonstock, who they're trying to chase down during top 10, Brennan Mercer's not gonna be getting anywhere from one lap down. And he, you know, he wants to see a caution 
before Brandon Peterson goes a lot down, or that can cause some big issues and almost take this 29 out of contention, depending on how everything would cycle through. You look at guys like that, a Peterson, a Mercer, almost like we did with the Eric Yamarola and A.J. Allmendinger in this year's Chase the NASCAR Sprint Cup, and Allmendinger almost advancing to round number two. Missed it by two points on Sunday. Will it be that close here in RSR competition tonight? We will find out. We are now one quarter distance, 41 of 160 laps. Here from the Monster Mile, we're going to pause, uh, catch our breaths, and come back with more racing action after this. Eric Brundies, David Comstock, Adam Benefield, Matt LaCrosse, Thomas J. George, your top five from Dover International Speedway. This is LSR TV and the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series. Trucking has always been a part of me. It started years ago when my dad and granddad were hauling vegetables to market in Liverpool. The family immigrated to Canada in the late 60s and settled near Alliston, Ontario. I bought my first truck in 1982 and Mercer Trucking was born. Today Mercer Trucking has over 50 trucks and terminals in Toronto and Los Angeles. Our storage facilities at both terminals can handle any size of distribution needs throughout North America. We service the continental U.S., including Hawaii and Alaska. We run over 120,000 miles per month in some of the best equipment on the road today. We specialize in less than truckload shipments, show freight, we do rush team service deliveries, and haul your refrigerated or heated product. Our regular team service from Canada to California is second to none, and our staff and drivers are among the best in the business. I'm proud of our people and what they can achieve. Trucking is in my blood, it's my livelihood, and it's what I do best.
Welcome back to Dover International Speedway, the Monster Mile here for RSR Full Throttle Cup Series competition presented by Gary Mercer Trucking, Jacob Seelman, and Evan Pasoko in the broadcast booth for the Dover 160 here tonight as it is a madhouse up front and there's a new leader in town. David Comstock took the lead on lap 45, getting around the 94 of Eric Brundies, but right now what we're keeping an eye on is you guys see the pass and now getting ready to see the 20 of Comstock. He is working a lot of lap traffic, Evan, and boy, uh, that's not all he's been working the last uh, four or five laps. He caught the fence coming out of the corner number two and didn't just overdrive and catch it. We also saw Mitch Rolo, I think it was, that Audi 6 machine has some severe right side damage. He was a top five car when he went to commercial break. Right now he sits 13th. And a similar issue that we saw him, that David Comstock had, was just got a little bit sideways off the corner. We corrected, caught the wall, and now right in front of race leader, the 36 machine's going to get to the outside wall. That's Rich Jet. He will go one lap down, but David Comstock has been in a hornet's nest the last three, four laps. Trying to navigate all this lap traffic. Next car on the list of 66 goes low to stay around. He'll get around Tim without issue. And now the 43 machine is in his sight. As the Comstock rolls through three and four, he does have a two tenths of a second lead over Eric Brundy. Brundy's still stuck behind Brandon Peterson. So Brandon Peterson, chase contender and challenger round hopeful, we'll call him, has now lost his lap as well. He'll be the last car one lap down. How nervous are you right now if you're a chaser like an Eric Brundies, an Adam Benefield, uh, Justin Wilson, guys who, uh, yeah, a couple of them are pretty safely in, but these chasers who know they need points, how nervous are you navigating a hornet's nest like this, Evan, where you know all you have to do is stay out of trouble, but there could be disaster lurking at every turn. I'll tell you, we've only had one car hit the garage, and that has been Keith Brooks Jr., so there are still 31 cars on track. Brian Harvey down pit road for service. He sits three laps down right now. That means there's still a lot to lose, Jake. And it's not like, you know, you'll drop a couple of laps and you'll still be able to, you know, get a top 20 finish out of it right now. You lose a handful of laps, that's 31st position. 31 points is not safe. That'll put everybody but Benefiel in jeopardy. It will, and right now, Adam Benefield trying to hold on tight to the third position in lockstep with Eric Grundy's as the 20 of David Comstock puts another chaser one lap down. The 42 Mittler Brothers Chevrolet, that is Scott Stenzel, another one who came into the night on the chase bubble. He goes a lap down. He's picked up a couple positions to 18th, but that 42 machine still has a lot of work to do, and I'm not so sure he is going to be able to advance right here. This is going to put Stenzel in a very tough position. He entered with two points over. Steve got shot, but as he runs right now, it's about nine positions on the racetrack, and he continues to lose spots to lead lap cards that Audi Ford of Brunnies and Benefield are able to go around him, but it, it is all on the bubble. It's still all up in the air as a lot of these guys just not having the luck that they needed. And it looks like a lot of them are working with some right side damage, which is obviously going to be hindering their progress. It is, and that's, an, that's a side effect we talk about of just washing that car a little too high up the banking, Evan, and kissing that fence. As now we got the battle heating up again for the number two position. Adam Benefield putting a lot of pressure on Eric Meeks. And we had trouble in turn number three as they're uh, they're trying to wad him up again. Yeah, the 24 of James Robinson went to hit the pit lane, Jacob, and went down to the apron. I don't know if you can replay, but this is lap 60, and he came back up onto the track because he got down there too hot. Nearly took out the 25 Salute Toyota of Mark Bratcher and the 26 Chase Driver had to take evasive action. Now caution, we got trouble on the track. The 62 of John Wilco is in the wall in turn one. Yeah, and sideways, and the leaders are taking evasive action. Hold on tight, everybody. Wilco woes it all the way down to black asphalt and is going to have number 64 of 160. And I'm sure some of these leaders have got to be breathing a sigh of relief, Evan, because had we gone much longer, we would have been talking about green flag pit stops. And a couple of drivers uh, with a visible sigh of relief over the radio that 
needed this caution. How about a break for Scott Stenzel? He'll remain the first car one lap down. That'll set him up for a wave. It looks like the majority of these chase drivers who are one lap down are going to stay out as David Comstock brings the leaders down pit road. That would give Stenzel, Peterson, looks like Rich Jett, J. Randall Watkins, C.J. Lavera, a whole group of guys going to stay out to get their laps back. And we're going to take it down pit road right now. Keep an eye on the three leaders, Comstock, Brundies, and Benefiel, as they all will pull into their pit stalls. They are the leading three stalls on the pit lane as Brundies, the championship leader, the pole sitter tonight. Right side's going on that machine, the number 94. And David Comstock already getting left side work on the number 20 Monster Energy Chevrolet. He is going to be down and away very quickly. He will maintain the lead off pit road, top three going to come out exactly like they went in. Comstock, Brundies, Benefiel, and an update from John Wilco over the radio. Right front tire blowing out on his machine. That going to be the reason he gets up into the wall and brings out the first caution of this RSR chase race here tonight at Dover with now what's going to be 65 laps complete. Looks like a little bit of a strategy call for Stefan Marinak. The number six Chevrolet is going to pick up some substantial ground on pit road. Looks like that may have been a two-tire call on the pit lane. That'll get him maybe about six, seven spots. We'll have to see as the scoring cycles through. But all I saw were right sides go up at number six. So the first difference, I guess you'll say, the top six left the way they entered. Nathan Little and Thomas J. George are going to be the first two cars that don't gain any spots. And it's obviously the sixth car taking that two-tire strategy. He'll go from 15th position to 7th on that call. So let's take a look now at the updated top 10 as they run with 65 complete. David Comstock, Eric Brundies, Adam Benefield, Matt LaCrosse. Those were your top four before the caution. They come out exactly the same way. Justin Wilson rides fifth. Jonathan Cadell, one of the chasers, up to sixth. Stefan Marinak, as you documented, Evan, up to seventh on two tires. Thomas J. George rides in eighth in the snap-on Chevrolet. Steve Gottschalk. The bubble driver coming in, again, doing exactly what he needs to do. He picked up a position on pit road. He moves to ninth. The Nathan Little, another one of our chasers, rounds out the top ten in car number four. As it looks like we're going to have, I think, 19 cars on the lead lap when we go back to green flag racing, which should be thinking about another lap or so. I think we'll have 67 of 160 complete when we get this restart, Evan, and you know, we talk about Dover and how difficult it is to make moves here. Restarts, especially double file restarts like we have here in RSR, they're going to be critical because you got to get all you can get when we go back green flag racing. And that's something that we say at every track. You're going to go in and you're going to say, all right, you need to get as much as you can on these restarts. Dover is especially important because take his example, David Comstock. He was even with or if not a tad faster than Eric Brundies, but he was stuck in a back bumper for the longest time because the opportunity just did not present itself to be able to complete a pass for number one spot. So it took him about 20 plus laps before he was able to get to the top position. So going to be interesting to see how a lot of these guys shuffle through. Interested enough to know in a couple cars, James Robinson has dropped connection from the sim i racing's equivalency of a mechanical failure so he is no longer in the race he's behind the wall and then brian harvey the number 66 group they pushed that machine behind the wall as well so those two cars out of contention at this extent and just as we've documented 67 laps complete when we go back green 93 remain here from the monster mile david comstock and eric brundy's on the front row benefield lacrosse Wilson Cadell, your front three rows at the Ford first. I racing Mustang pace car hits pit road, leaves the field in the hands of David Comstock off turn number four. Green flag flies. We're back underway. Eric Brundy stayed right with the Monster Energy Chevrolet. They fall in line lockstep as the battles for third. Oh, Quickly won back by back Adam Benefield. And we're back under yellow just like that. We talked about restarts being dicey, and it got dicey back in the pack, Evan. Yeah, Mark Bratcher is going to go around into the inside retaining wall. Looks like uh, some self-inflicted tire spin. There was a checkup in front of him, so he had to get on the brakes and immediately had to get back to the throttle because they were checking out in front of him. And looks like there was a uh, had he had the checkup or something, and that machine just turned dead right. He will hit Jose Gonzalez, who is a 
Driver on the outside looking in. That's going to give Jose damage. And then Bratcher ended up in the inside wall. And that's how he ended up back under yellow. We're going to have to see how much damage that gave Jose. Because he's sitting right now 13th position. He's trying to chase down Steve Gotchtuck. Who's only four spots up in front of him. But Jose, I'm sure, did not need that extra shot to the driver's side door. No, he didn't. And that's going to make life very, very tough for that number 26 machine. As we're under caution... 69 laps, 91 remain, and the running order going to be virtually identical to uh, what it was when we went back to green, because I don't think we were able to see any passing before the caution came out. It's still going to be Comstock, Brundies, Benefield, Lacrosse, Wilson, the top five as we cross the stripe, and Evan, one of the things we document, the struggles of these chase guys early. Guys, the ones who are up in the championship standings, they're running up front. The guys who are on the fringe, on the cusp, need to have good runs. None of them are really having good runs today. C.J. LeVere, he's back mired a lap down right now. Brandon Peterson's mired a lap down right now. In fact, I think he'll get the free pass, actually, under this caution. You got uh, guys like a Scott Stenzel, who's back in 17th. Ho Jose Gonzalez, who's got damage now. Even Rhett McBride, I've not said his name yet tonight. He's back in 14th. We've not talked about him all day. Some of these really, really good guys are still really, really good, and it seems like for the guys who have been struggling, they just continue to struggle this evening. Yeah, Jose is down right now getting service done to get some sort of repairs on his number 26 machine. He is joined by Mark Bratcher on the pit lane, Doug Roth also down there, John Wilco. Those cars, non-chase contenders, and now that the field cycles at a corner number four, they will leave the pit lane. Scott Stenzel was just down pit road as well. Again, he lost his lap, took a wave around, so did not hit the pit lane under the last caution. He took four tires, looked like he may have stayed in a little bit to get the right side repaired on his number 42 machine. So we'll have to see where everybody cycles out. A few more cars are going to come down pit road towards the tail end of the lead lap. Uh, Rich Jett, I see him down there at the 48 of Kevin Linden on pit road as well. He's one lap down just to top off here as we get set for another restart. Coming up here not too far away. Light still on the pace car. Right now, David Comstock looking to make it back-to-back -back trips to Victory Lane. The Boston Energy Chevrolet still P1, but again, Eric Brundy, as you mentioned, the Pennzoil Ford Fusion has been so strong all season long. He sits the number two spot. Adam Benefield still in third. So top three really haven't shuffled at all tonight, but we have seen that one change for the lead, and that's where we sit right now. Yes, it is, with David Comstock looking for his second win in just three starts in RSR competition. The Monster Chevrolet looking to play Chase Spoiler for the second week in a row. And as we get set to go back to green, we'll keep an eye on where all the chasers are running, as well as uh, where your favorite driver may be running in tonight's race. As we now have less than 90 to go, coming up on halfway. So, Evan, real quickly, the urgency in this race is going to start to increase. The further we get past that halfway mark, which we're going to cross here in about nine more laps, the uh, less room drivers are going to give, the more they're going to try and take. They'll force the issue, and that's what could lead to what has been a relatively caution-free race up to now, turning into a slugfest late in the going. And there's already a couple guys that are essentially in panic mode. At this point, you got Brandon Peterson, who is one line down at number 21 position. Brennan Mercer also back 24th. He's a lap down as well. So, and you went through it that a lot of these guys that are running solid in the points, they're not locked in, but are sitting pretty comfortably, are having good runs, and tonight has not been friendly to those guys that are trying to challenge and are on the outside looking in. So we had double final down in the quarters number three and four. Going to be a lap 73 restart. David Comstock once again a control car. But keep an eye on throughout this field because tire spin was uh, plundered that last time. And that's what ended up bringing us under a quick yellow. I racing Ford first Mustang pace car heads to the safety of the pit road leaves the field once again in the hands of David Comstock who rolls off corner number four green flag in the air Comstock is gone Brundies falls in line Benefield falls in line lacrosse trying to get in line that is the top four battle for fourth in turn number one here comes Justin Wilson to the inside he'll take that spot 
More side by side, it is the 11 to Jonathan Cadell on the outside lane under attack. The six of Stefan Marinak has gotten through and now the one machine of Thomas J. George is going to get over to the bottom. He'll get clear as well. So Jonathan Cadell, after starting on the outside of row number three, will drop back to P8. He loses two spots on that exchange as the top five really spread out here in these opening laps off this restart. Next side-by-side -side battle sees Red McBride on the outside lane, trying to put a challenge on John Higman Jr. Goes back to the bottom, and now will he look to the inside? He'll stay in line. That battle for 13. How bizarre is it, Evan, that of all the chasers we've talked about tonight so far, Rhett McBride is the name that until just now, I don't think we had talked about him under the green flag one time this evening. The number two who spent most of the season second in points to Eric Brundies is in P14 right now, struggling mightily so far in the first half of this race. And it's unusual that we're not talking about Rhett McBride in the top five, top seven cars here, but he has just not been able to find the handle on that machine tonight yet. Another swap for position. The Jonathan Cadell machine got a drop back as the Ford of Nathan Little is able to get around him. And Looks like the one machine of Thomas J. George rides right now in P7. He's picked up a spot after losing a handful of them coming off of that restart. But Brundy's trying to track down David Comstock. Comstock had a great start, was able to get out to about three-tenths of a second lead. They sit at 28 hundreds this time through corners number one and two. Put it about four or five car lengths down the back straightaway. Comstock over Brundy's Benefield about equidistance back in third. And then top three once again trying to pull away. How about Justin Wilson? Sitting right now, P4, his Joey Giacchino Racing Chevrolet after starting back in 11th place. It's right now, top five. Yeah, doing very, very well. This is the kind of run that we've been expecting to see from the JGR number 58 machine, Evan, who picked up six spots a week ago in, uh, in Loud, New Hampshire. That machine has been on the rise. They very, very much struggled in the opening chase race at Chicago. Could not get what they need to get and were involved in a couple of skirmishes and now that 58 machine after uh, what looks like is going to be back to back top 10 and even top five finishes they have rip roared their way into a qualifying spot for round two of the chase and boy he's shown no signs of slowing down because that machine is coming to the front he was seventh coming into tonight i would imagine that going into round number two he could be even higher than that but I'm looking at maybe fourth for that number 58 machine if all goes according to plan here because he is having a great run tonight. I think our theory that David Comstock was a little bit faster than Brundies has shown true to this extent. Again, he was behind him for the longest time, was unable to make a pass, and after restarting here as race leader, has been able to pull halfway point this time on the start finish line. But Comstock, Jacob, he's got about four more tenths on Brundies the last few laps. It's up to six tenths of a second between the top two cars on racetrack, and actually Adam Benefield appears to be closing in on Eric Brundies, but one thing to note is once these 12 cars advance the next round in this chase for the championship, with no chase drivers winning so far, and if David Comstock is able to take another trip to victory lane, that would mean no chase drivers are gonna get any sort of port advantage moving forward. They're not gonna get those three bonus points per win, which means that all 12 cars would be on an even playing field. Comstock looked like he caught the fence down the front straightaway. He'll lose a little bit of time. That'd be the second time he's done that tonight. I want to take a chance while we've got it with 82 laps going up on the board this time to take a look here at halfway for our four first mid-race leaderboard. Out front of this field by about four car lengths is the Monster Energy Chevrolet of David Comstock. Eric Brundies rides in second. Third is the 85 of Adam Benefield. The 58, Justin Wilson, fourth, and Matt Lacrosse in the top five. Stefan Mar Marinak rides in position number six. Thomas George is seventh. Nathan Little eighth. Jonathan Cadell ninth. Evan Steve Gottschalk completes the first ten. Scott Simley right now, the number 68 machine, rides in 11th position. Dan Murray, the number 55, Van Soil Toyota in 12th. Corbin Hemsford has recovered from losing a lap. He's 13th. Brett McBride, the number 2 machine, is in the 14th spot. John Higman Jr. sits 15th right now. Scott Stenzel back on the lead lap. The 42 car sits in 16th position. Rich Jet, 17th. Mitch Rolo, after catching the fence, being a top 5 car earlier in the race, he's 18th position. Jose Gonzalez, Chase Hopeful, and championship driver trying to make it into the next round outside looking in tonight working a lot of damage in 19th position mark bradford last car on the lead lap is the loop number 25 is p20
21st, C.J. LaPierre. Brennan Mercer rides 22nd. Those two of our chasers, the lows 48, Kevin Linden 23rd. J. Randall Watkins is 24th. 25th is another chaser, Brandon Peterson. Doug Roth is 26th. Two laps down, 27th. Douglas Wyatt in the number nine. Sherry Ann Mills, three laps down. She rides 28th out of this race. 29th, James Robinson. 30th, John Wilco. 31st, Brian Harvey and shotgun on this field. Keith Brooks Jr. who went out early in the going. That's a look at the iRacing Ford First mid-race leaderboard for Drive One. And with 87 laps going to go up on the board when they get back to the start-finish line. We're going to take this opportunity to take a break and take care of some business here uh, when we come back still much more ahead because we've still got 73 laps to go from the monster mile david comstock your race leader eric grundy's and adam benefield still trying to chase him down from dover international speedway this is lsr tv we'll be right back Trucking has always been a part of me. It started years ago when my dad and granddad were hauling vegetables to market in Liverpool. The family immigrated to Canada in the late 60s and settled near Alliston, Ontario. I bought my first truck in 1982 and Mercer Trucking was born. Today Mercer Trucking has over 50 trucks and terminals in Toronto and Los Angeles. Our storage facilities at both terminals can handle any size of distribution needs throughout North America. We service the continental U.S., including Hawaii and Alaska. We run over 120,000 miles per month in some of the best equipment on the road today. We specialize in less than truckload shipments, show freight, we do rush team service deliveries, and haul your refrigerated or heated product. Our regular team service from Canada to California is second to none, and our staff and drivers are among the best in the business. I'm proud of our people and what they can achieve. Trucking is in my blood, it's my livelihood, and it's what I do best. David Comstock, still your race leader, and has extended that now to almost one full second over championship chase leader Eric Grundy's as we welcome you back to the Monster Mile, Dover International Speedway, and a remarkably calm RSR Full Throttle Cup Series event at Dover 160, more than halfway home as we work lap number 96 of 160, coming up on the final 60 lap sprint to the checkered flag as Adam Benefield trying to chase down the championship leader. Those are the top two in the point standings, running second and third. But the storyline, as it's been the last two weeks, Evan Pasoko, is the fact that we have a non-chaser leading the way once again. Can't believe that we have gone three chase races and potentially going to have three times a non-chaser going to victory lane. David Comstock's trying to do it for the second week in a row. John Higman Jr. did it in the opener at Chicagoland 
it's remarkable to think that after the level of competition these 16 drivers who have qualified for the chase for the championship have shown all season long that we get down to this chase and now they've been outfoxed potentially for a third straight week. And it was those last handful of races before we cut down this field and set the grade for the chase that it was these chase drivers that were putting on a clinic towards the end of the regular season, we'll call it. At NEC this 20, David Comstock, he shows up to Chicago Land Speedway, the Cody Bias race at entry. And remember, Jake, he was up at the top of the practice charts and just could not get that car to act when he wanted it to on a long run. Was unable to get the trip to victory lane. He was fast tonight. He was fast last week. So this Monster Energy machine has been fast all three weeks. We've seen him. And at some points, and including tonight, showing up the dominant car of the season, the Dottie Four of Grundy's, who, by the way, is now back in third because Adam Benefield gotten around him. Yeah, Benefield just made a beautiful pass for second going into turn number three. And the number 85 Toyota, he had just dove to the bottom and took it. It was no contest. Eric Grundy's didn't have anything for him. And Benefield now moves to the runner-up position. We'll see if he has anything for race leader David Comstock here in the late goings as we complete 100 laps, 60 to go here from the Monster Mile as we take a look through the field. Evan, let's go through the field right here uh, and take a look at our chasers. We'll start with the number 85 of Adam Benefield, who's run second, had a very solid day. He's not been off the podium so far in this race, I believe, and the 85 came in just four points in arrears to Brundies. He's trying to make up a few of those here tonight. And he's doing the job that he needs to do right now. That would be about a, an equal distance rather because we have seen that 94 lead laps get laps led. So Betterfield sits in front of him by one point right now. He was four points behind him, but that was a pretty solid buffer, Jacob, of about 36 points. So uh, if you want to call two cars locked in, it was pretty much Brundies and Benefield that were set to go. Brundy sits right now third after leading last night. But again, the top three really have not gone anywhere uh, throughout the course of this race. Justin Wilson, who was the biggest gainer from last week's race, gained six spots and through tonight's seventh, but still only 10 positions to the good. He's doing the job that he needs to do. The number 58 rides in fourth. Yeah, back here in seventh is the number one snap-on Chevrolet of Thomas J. George. He's just had a quiet run, not been really outside of the top ten all race long, but not really been a threat to contend for the win tonight, just doing what he needs to do to advance, as is the guy right behind him in eighth, the number four machine of Nathan Little, who I thought was an underdog coming into this chase, but has pleasantly proved me wrong so far. He's been top ten every race uh, so far and has been a threat here in a couple of these first two races. Uh, Nathan Little doing a nice job as Jonathan Cadell behind him, Evan, sits ninth. You know, we got to talk about Steve Gottschalk, who has been one of the focal points all night long, but it comes to that cutoff as a one car slowed down on the apron there, Douglas Wyatt. Uh, is going to be getting back up to speed. It looks like he tried to come down pit road or, or missed. It looks like he actually had some issues down the back straightaway. But talking about that 10th place car, and now uh, Josh talking to drop back as well. He'll go to the number 11 position. He entered tonight as the last car on the inside with 40 points back, two to the good over Jose Gonzalez. And has run pretty much top 10 all race long. This maybe the furthest back we've seen him, Jacob, is 11th spot doing what he needs to do. There is still a buffer. He is leaving 10 spots in front of him that could cost him, but the way that the guys behind him are running right now, Steve Gottschalk get the job done just one spot in front of Dan Murray. Yeah, Dan Murray, the number 55 Toyota, he uh, snuck into the chase on the final night in Richmond. He's done a nice job so far. Looks like he's safely going to advance to round number two, riding 12th right now. Just been quietly consistent in this race not talked a lot about him same thing for the number two the deuce or rhett mcbride uh, mcbride has been second in the championship links through the regular season struggled a little bit in chicago was uh, decent in loudon and got collected in some late race mishaps but riding 13th he's another one who's doing exactly what he needs to do uh, to advance to the next round the problem is behind them outside the top 15 are several chasers who are seeing their hopes potentially evaporate. Yes, Scott Stenzo right now with the number 16 position, the number 42 car rides right there. Scott entered tonight's race 
to the good. He was 10th position with only a two-point buffer over Gosh Tom, which means the nearest challenger, Jose Gonzalez. He need to beat him by four spots. Stencil sits right now on the racetrack in the number 16 position. And the troubles for Jose Gonzalez only have him two spots behind him. So you want to do rough math. That means Jose is two points to the good over Scott Stenzel right now. Or for that final transfer spot, Jose is an 18th. Yeah, Jose trying to make up ground and looking a little further back. CJ LeVere rides 20th. I don't think he's in danger of out of round number two, but boy, he's not had a good night. He sits right now, the first car one lap in arrears. Brennan Mercer's had a terrible night, unfortunately, for the 29 crew. The Gary Mercer trucking machine rides 22nd, a lap down. Doesn't look like he will be advancing, nor do, does it look like Brandon Peterson in the Furniture Row Toyota will be advancing in the 24th position. The number 78 has not been able to get anything going right. Just, uh, unfortunately for Brandon Peterson, he got caught up in an incident with Jose Gonzalez uh, last time out, which pretty well uh, demolished his championship hopes, right? He is the furthest running back of our chase contenders in the 24th position, of course. The one driver of our 16-car field that is not in this race, number 92, Jason Lester, so uh, we know he will not be advancing, but uh, there you have it, the 15 chasers who are still remaining in this race, all of them still on the racetrack, as we now have 113 laps complete, just 47 laps to go, David Comstock leads by six tenths of a second over a new second place man, Adam Benefield, Eric Brundies is third, how about Stefan Marinak, Evan? That's a car that I think is going places. He just took over the fourth position a lap or two ago from Justin Wilson. And remember, it's all going to back and tribute to that two-tire call under the first caution flag. Remember, he was able to get about eight spots on that one. And I was going to say that the number six machine, the other drivers can use that call that he made to gauge how well that will work clearly. It has benefited him after starting back in 25th position. He was the first car on the starting grid to not put down a time in the qualifying session. 25th to 4th, 21 spots I think is a solid improvement. Stefan Marinak is getting the job done and he has placed himself in position and in contention to where if we would see a late race caution here or some sort of regroup into the field, that number 6 could have a shot at this trip to victory lane. 25 of Mark Bradshaw, last car on the lead lap. He's going to come down pit road in 3 and 4. Yeah, he is, so we'll keep an eye on Bratcher as he brings that car to the safety of the inside of the pit wall for service. And looking at the rest of the top ten, uh, pretty much they've stayed status quo uh, since we took that look back through the field. David Comstock, Adam Benefield both uh, reporting that they are very happy with their race cars right now, as is Eric Brundies. He, I've not heard a complaint from him all night, Evan. It just seems like where that 94 machine has stayed pretty well constant through the course of this race. Uh, the 20 and the 85 have just been able to turn up the wick a little bit. 25 and Mark Bratcher, who we mentioned was coming down pit road, gas and go, just a splash of fuel and his Luke Toyota is back out on the racetrack. So could that be the call that these guys are gonna be taking here when it comes to our lead lap cars? Uh, the issue that we were talking about, we mentioned Brandon Peterson in comparison to Brendan Mercer. Brendan Mercer, the number 29 machine, has now gone three laps down after just being one lap down. He has come down and completed his service. The problem between Mercer in comparison to Peterson was Brennan was only sitting one lap down. When you're two plus laps down like Brandon Peterson, even one caution is not going to help you all that much. So it just means you got that much more time to make up. But it is Dover. There could still be some cautions lurking. But when you come down to these latter stages of the race, nothing is guaranteed yet. But having a solid green flag run, David Comstock over a second now over Adam Benefield. The 62 machine going to go another lap down. That car will yield high to our race leaders. That is John Wilco. Wilco has had his problems. Look how torn up that machine is. He's about 39 laps down and has significant, significant damage as John Wilco has not had a solid night entering this race. No, uh, he has not. He's one of the cars that's been uh, part of a lot of the trouble tonight as some of our leaders now have started to hit pit road. Matt LaCrosse was just on pit road for service a lap or two ago. And Evan, the shuffle I think is about to begin. 
Yeah, now just inside of 40 laps to go for race leader David Comstock is when we're going to see all these guys start to cycle down to the pit road. We've seen gas and go. Matt LaCrosse came in. He made a four-tire call, so we have some variations on a pit strategy. Corbin Hemstreet making his way down to the pit lane now in car 41. We'll see what kind of strategy he pulls here. At least two tires, and I'm thinking with the length of time he's been on pit road, it may be a four-tire call for the number 41 machine as we see him start to drop like flies now. The question is going to be, uh, the question's going to be, what are the leaders going to do? As now we start to see the battle for the lead close up a little bit more. It's now just seven tenths of a second as Adam Benefield's chasing down the 20 of David Comstock again. Now just four car lengths in turn two. We talked about how David Comstock has been solid in one of the fastest cars in practice and in qualifying, but it was Chicagoland that these guys were able to get a glimpse at his weakness, and that was a very long green flag run. Comstock did a masterful job one week ago with the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. He was able to be up front lead laps. He was able to get that trip to victory lane, and he's able to get two tenths back on Adam Pettifield that time by, but it's these latter stages of a long green flag run. And oh, big check up right in front of David Comstock. He's going to get way on the brakes as the nine was slow right in front of the 43. There goes that gap. David Comstock is lucky. He's still on the racetrack. Benefield's going to close it in, and now he'll get sucked behind lap cars. Yeah, and look what that's allowed for the number six of Stefan Marinak. It's made this a four-car free-for-all for the race lead as they work off of corner number two. David Comstock, your leader, he's starting to pull away from Benefield again, but now it's a three-man scramble for second. Marinak's joined this party, and Brundies wants a piece of it off four. He's been able to close it back in. How about that six machine? Stefan Marinak has also been able to close the gap down to about a second. David Comstock has been able to kind of get back away. Betterfield was on his bumper, but uh, caught a lap machine on the outside lane and the quarter number four at an insignificant time. So uh, that puts Betterfield back seven tenths. Brundies, Marinak, though, second through fourth. But a car lane separates them respectively at a quarter number four. Looks like Brundies may have some for Adam Benefield. He's closing to the inside down at the one. Battle for second as Brundies powers to the inside. He'll make the move off turn number two and take the second spot away. The battle's going to be for third as Brundies moves to the high side. That slows up Benefield and that's going to allow Marinak right on through. The number six machine goes to the podium and now Brundies back to the runner-up spot facing David Comstock once again. And it looks like Benefield is really struggling all of a sudden, Evan. That 85 car does not look happy. He may be setting up to come down pit road. We're not sure. We just saw the four car of Nathan Little come down pit road. Again, pit road speed at 35 miles an hour. You got to lose about 100 miles an hour at least going down into quarter number three to get on those brakes. He's going to go high. Looks like the 41 machine is going to go to the inside. That is a lap car. That's Corbin Hemstree. Going to complete that pass on him. But Either the 85 is trying to pit or he has just fallen over that cliff there on those tires because he is dropping about at least half a second lap to the guys that he was just running even with. He's two seconds back in the lead battle already. Yeah, now he comes now, down pit road. Oh, there here is. comes Benefield. Yeah, that's right. The 85 coming to pit road this time as we continue to watch. We'll keep an eye on Benefield's pit stop right here, but we're also seeing the difference between no tires and four tires. Matt LaCrosse just blew by everybody in this lead battle in the number 21. He took on four on that pit stop, making up a ton of time. The question will be, is it enough time? As now the race leader's peeling off. He's coming to pit road. That is David Comstock. Let's cover the stop, Evan. He's going to come down pit road. Also keep in mind that we have the 85 of Benefield. Benefield is going to come into his stall and looks like he's getting service. Right side's up on Benefield as... Comstock comes down the pit road behind him. Looks like the left side's going to go up as well. Four tires in fuel for Adam Benefield. David Comstock now cycling in. He'll hit his stall here in just a few moments. Yeah, he will. Comstock is pulling in right now, and it is going to be immediate work on the number 20 machine. Right side tires going up on the jack stands, and they are changing right sides. Jack drops. They run around. It's going to be a four-tire pit stop for the number 20 machine as Eric Brundies is hitting the pit lane right now as the 20 of Comstock pulls away the championship leader heads to his pit stall. 
Wilson on pit road, Scott Stenzel also down on pit road, the Don machine exiting as well, but here comes Brundies, he pulls into the number one pit stall, which he got for qualifying on pole position, right side tires going to go up as they start to put gas in the shell, Pennzoil for two tire call for Eric Brundy. That could be very big, there's only 27 laps to go. Where is it going to shake out for the race leader? He is trying to make a power play right here as we're going to watch where Brundy cycles out. It is two tires versus four now as Brundy pulls into the pack right here. It's going to be 27 laps. He'll have to hold off the rest of this field. The way it sits right now, Jonathan Cadell has cycled through to the race lead. You want to talk the gap between Brundies. He sits right now and he comes off a quarter number two. The 85 of Benefield is in the middle of one and two. So he's got a handful of seconds over him. We'll get an estimated time on that once the field cycles through, but still about six cars yet to come down pit road for service. Jose Gonzalez now the last car on the lead lap. This could be big news for Jose who's trying to get a break here. Maybe a caution could turn this race around for the 2016. Well, look at the guys that are staying out right now, hoping for a caution. Jonathan Cadell, the 11th. John Higman Jr., the 60. Scott Simley, the 68. Rich Jett, Gonzalez, McBride. Guys who wouldn't have a prayer to win this race. Otherwise, they're doing everything they can, praying for a break. 25 laps to go. And Cadell in the 11, one of our chasers, he's your race leader. And this could change things up. Red McBride going to come down pit road from the number six spot. He comes in for service. That will leave the top five cars out on the racetrack. And we always say, oh, if you get a caution in the middle of these green flag stops, that it's really going to shake things up. But Cadell way up against the fence there in one and two. This could be championship picture defining on what happens here. If it stays green, Eric Brundy's would cycle through to be the race leader as they run right now. Maranac is seventh, Comstock is eighth, Benefield is ninth, so those would be the top four if everybody were to cycle through here in the top five. Yeah, and I want to make a comment on Cadell being up so close to the fence. He got tagged by the nine of Douglas Wyatt. He's lucky he didn't park it in the fence in turns one and two because that was some significant contact. Very lucky for the Strutmasters number 11 that he holds on to that race car as now, like you said, five cars remaining trying to catch a caution. 21 laps to go and Eric Brundy's the best of the rest right now. He's in P6 trying to steal this thing if none of these guys can make it. How about Marinac, the number six? We talked about him being in fourth, the 43 up high off pace that is a lap machine of Doug Roth, but I said Marinac, he was able to get up in four, so if something happens, either be by caution or the way this whole cycle's through, he would be in contention to maybe try to steal this one and go to victory lane after making a lot of moves on this race, gaining 20 plus spots. He rides what would be second position, as now only four cars remain on the lead lap. John Higgin Jr. just made the peel to pit road in the number 60, and I think we're about to have another one maybe make the peel. Scott Simley looked like maybe he was headed for pit road here. Uh, next time by, we'll keep an eye on that, but right now it's Cadell, Gonzalez, Simley, and Jet. The four holdouts right here with just 19 laps to go. Evan, uh, there's no way Cadell can make it on fuel, is there? Closing in right now, he has less than 20 laps to go. Trying to get a number on the last time this 11 car was down pit road. It has been quite a while. Take a look back through the lap times and whatnot. It looks like that the last time he was down for service was well over lap number 65 was the last time he was down for service. Oh man, uh, it's gonna be tight. That's all I'll say. Uh, about a hundred, no, not quite a hundred, 95 laps. That is tight, Evan. I'm not, I couldn't, maybe you can tell me better. I don't know the exact fuel mileage here at Dover, but I know uh, based on those numbers, 95 laps, that's right at, about at the edge of the fuel window, I believe. I think 95 would be pushing it by a couple of laps. And he did get, I think, a couple laps under yellow exiting the pit road on that fuel, and then another caution flew after that. So if he was saving, it's going to be close. So Cadell, can he steal one here at the Monster Mile? Jose Gonzalez, Scott Simley, Rich Jett, Eric Brundies, your top five right now. 
Brundy's though is a lap in arrears to this race for the lead and which right now is 15.9 seconds. Jose Gonzalez back of Jonathan Cadell, the Strutmasters Toyota leads. There are just 15 laps to go. The leader's in two. Yeah, again, Jose Gonzalez, we talked about him. He was running around about eight spots behind Steve Gottschalk all night long. Right now, Jacob, 11 in front of him. This could be a huge call, and we have seen Jose trying to pull the strategy card many times prior in this season. Jonathan Cadell has announced he will be coming down pit road. He does not have enough to stretch it the distance. You have to imagine that these other three cars as well on the lead lap will have to come down because they have less distance to cover. Do we see these guys here with two or even a splash and go as Jose Scott Simley down pit road. Looks like Rich Jet's going to stay out for one more cycle around. So Cadell, Gonzalez, Simley all down pit road. Rich Jet the only one to pit. Yeah, and what this is going to do right now is this is going to set up a titanic battle for the win. And it's right here off turn number two as all, all these cars come to pit road. The battle for the lead is down the back straightaway. Eric Brundies has got the six of Steven Marinak all over his back bumper. Off turn four, it's less than a car length separating those two. 13 laps remaining as now Brundies. He is trying to hold off the charge. Marinak for the lead. Again, that six has just played his cards right all night long after starting back in 25th as a top two car right now. Jonathan Cadell still scored his race leader. He has exited the pit lane, so scoring will cycle through. It is about a tenth of a second between these top two on the racetrack right now. David Comstock needs to get around lap traffic. Comstock is stuck behind a side-by-side -side battle of the 36 to the 07. Both of those are lap machines, which has prevented him from being able to get up and catch Brundies and Marinek. This could be a two-horse race. Yeah, it very well could be because we're coming down to 11 laps to go. I don't know that Comstock's got enough time to get back. And Brundies is starting to pull away a little bit. He's got a quarter of a second now on Marinek. Comstock 3.2 back. Benefield 3.8 back. Him Street, he's Caution. eight seconds back of the lead. Trouble! Wow, caution to fly. It looks like Doug Roth is around in corner number four. Either he came down to pit. It looks like he came down to pit, overdrove it, and caught those sand barrels there on pit road entry, Jacob. Now what? Caution. Oh, Thunder boy. Yeah, and a restart with six to go. As we take a look at this again, Evan, how many times have I told you my mantra this season? Uh, this changes everything. And, and, and tonight, it's not only the race on the line, but it's some guys shot at a championship that's going to hang it a balance on what happens in these next laps. Trouble, Jose Gonzalez is blowing up down the back straight away. Oh my, this, this, oh wow. Oh, we had another wreck in turn one and two. The 58 machine got turned in the corner. Justin Wilson, multiple cars involved. What happened here? Checking out I... under the caution. It looks like the 78, we need to get this on replay. Lap 149, Jacob, turns one and two. The 78 comes up the racetrack. Justin Wilson into the inside retaining wall. He clips the 60 it looks like they are all able to drive away with minor like minor damage justin wilson is sideways in the middle of the track thomas j george the number one heavy contact into that one looks like the one may have lost his engine as well along with jose gonzalez this has massive championship wow. implications. Justin Wilson, we thought he was a lock to go to the next round. This could well have ended any hope he had of advancing now. Unbelievable as we're setting up for a restart with six to go and disaster for several of our championship contenders. Thomas Unbelievable. George, Jacob, eight points is behind the wall. He had eight points entering tonight. He is behind the wall. Wow, this changes everything. Guys like a Brennan Mercer, Jose Gonzalez, they're sitting here going, what did we just do to deserve this? They have a chance. And meanwhile, while all this was going on, didn't even get a chance to say that Eric Brundy's faked the six of Stefan Marinak. 
down the pit lane. So what does that do? It sets up Brundies and Comstock on the front row one more time. And I don't know that there's any way Brundies wins this race unless a caution flag comes out on those two tires, Evan. I don't think he's got enough. I still can't wrap my head around what just happened. We went from looking forward to a two-car shootout here and the championship picture had shuffled quite a lot. We saw a couple of guys on the outside looking in, trying to wait to the last possible moment to pit. And now Thomas J. George, he's back behind the wall. Brendan Mercer's back in the top 20 position. Jose's down the lap. Steve Gottschalk, who was 12th position, he's up to 5th. I have no idea where these points are going to end up at the end of the night. This is crazy. No, we're going to have to wait for the official report on this one. Uh, we won't even be able to report who's and in Wilson's and who's out, out until after the checkered flag. And Justin Wilson's done. They've taken wow. that car behind the wall, and that could be the nail in the coffin of his championship hopes. Unbelievable. As we get set for a restart, we're not going to speculate on who's in and who's out right now. But what we do know is the picture has changed dramatically with coming up on six laps to settle it at Dover. Evan, I'm going to take a, I, I'm going to take a quote from you uh, from last week at Loudon. Whatever that was, that just happened. And we don't know what that was, but whatever it is, it has completely changed the, the shape of this championship battle. And we gotta get our minds wrapped around it because we still have six laps to go with Brundies and Comstock gonna be on the front row. How about Benneville? Corbin Hemstreet is in fourth after starting from pit road and losing a lap two laps into the race. Wow. What, what a night. I, I How don't about Stenzel? even. Scott Stenzel's up the sixth. Yeah, Stenzel's championship wow. hopes might have just been saved by that whole deal. He's in sixth. Oh, boy, Evan, I'm battening down the hatches and buckling my seatbelt right here because this is about to get fun. If a caution comes out, this race could well be over by the time we get back to the start-finish line. This may be about the only shot we get to finish this one off here under green flag. The iRacing Ford First Mustang pace car hits the pit lane. Field in the hands of Eric Brundies. He is gone. Green flag in the air. Brundies, Comstock, they're your top two. Comstock to the outside, side by side in one. Comstock, the great run on the outside. He takes a look up high, can't get it done in one and two. He'll drop back as he go for the crossover. He's got a run on him. But on he forward the defensive line down the back and a three bumper to bumper for one and two. Yeah, Eric Brundies has got to make that car very wide. Five laps to go this time. He's making it three grooves wide on a one-groove racetrack. Five to go for Brundies. I don't know how much longer he can hold them off. Marinax up to fourth on fresh tires. If this runs all the way out, the six might have the best tires to win this race. Marinax flying through the field. He's up the fifth, but does he have enough time? As he closes in, actually, he's got fourth away at a quarter number four this time by. Going to be four laps to go. A caution at this point would end this race. David Comstock still trying to battle from the number two spot. How long does he wait before he makes the side on using that bumper? Brundies pulls a little bit at a two. Keep an eye on the six of Stefan Marinak. He's up to third now around Adam Benefiel. I think that six car could play spoiler to everybody. Three laps to go. That's Can traffic. Brundies hang on? They're working around the lap car of Doug Roth. Marinax coming in one. He is flying. The number six machine is already up to within three tenths of a second. Can he pull the ultimate strategy call? He's got a run on David Comstock. They're going to be coming to two laps to go. Does he have enough time? We're bumper to bumper for the top three spots in three and four. Yeah, we are. Two laps to go this time. Oh, Comstock's right there on the back bumper. Two miles left to Dover. They're back in one. Marinac on the freshest tires. He's trying to do anything he can. He's on the bumper, he's up on the 20 machine, he can't get around him. Eric Brundy's two car lengths down at the corner, number three and four. I think it's that 20 that's holding back Stefan Marinek, the penultimate Tom at a four, coming to the white flag. Oh, this one's about to get good as they cross the stripe. White silk in the air, battle for second in turns one and two. Marinak washes the 20 of Comstock up the racetrack. He's through. I don't think he's going to have enough time, though, down the back straightaway. They're side by side for second in turn number three, but it's going to be the Shell Pennzoil number 94 going to his fifth win of 2014. 
Eric Brundies has conquered the monster. He wins at Dover, holds off Stefan Marinak, David Comstock third, Benefield fourth, Corbin Hemstreet fifth. A chaser wins in the chase finally, and it's the one who didn't need to. Eric Brundies, the championship leader, further cements why, boys, the road to Homestead goes through me. And now these drivers wait for those standings to become official. A tale of two different stories up at the top of the scoring pylon at the end of the night. Eric Brundies, who qualified on pole position, he'll walk away in the number one spot. Stefan Marinak, who qualified 25th, is going to pick up a total of 23 spots with a second place result in a valiant late, late, late race effort, rather. I think if he was able to get around Comstock just a little bit sooner, Jacob, he may have had a shot, but that just delayed him for that lap and a half or so, and he was unable to get the job done. But a lot of drivers talk right now after the race, a lot of drivers not satisfied with the way that went down, and uh, a little bit of words being exchanged here on pit road. We'll follow up on that in a minute. The Gary Mercer Trucking Post Race Show right after this. Eric Brundy's your winner. We'll talk with him when we come back. Trucking has always been a part of me. It started years ago when my dad and granddad were hauling vegetables to market in Liverpool. The family immigrated to Canada in the late 60s and settled near Alliston, Ontario. I bought my first truck in 1982 and Mercer Trucking was born. Today Mercer Trucking has over 50 trucks and terminals in Toronto and Los Angeles. Our storage facilities at both terminals can handle any size of distribution needs throughout North America. We service the continental U.S., including Hawaii and Alaska. We run over 120,000 miles per month in some of the best equipment on the road today. We specialize in less than truckload shipments, show freight, we do rush team service deliveries, and haul your refrigerated or heated product. Our regular team service from Canada to California is second to none, and our staff and drivers are among the best in the business. I'm proud of our people and what they can achieve. Trucking is in my blood, it's my livelihood, and it's what I do best.
Welcome back to LSR TV, and we're still trying to catch our breath here during the Gary Mercer Trucking Post Race Show for the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series. A breathtaking finish tonight sees Eric Brundies pick up his fifth win of the 2014 season uh, in incredible fashion. But right now, we're going to throw it right down to pit lane where Evan Pasoko, you have caught up with the third place man, the driver we thought was going to be able to take Brundies all the way down to the finish, and he just about did it, David Comstock. David Comstock was about a handful of laps away uh, from taking it to victory lane back-to-back -back weeks. David, walk us through that final sequence of stops leading up to that caution flag period and then that race down to the checkered flag where you were on the back bumper of Brundies, was unable to get the job done, and will evidently come home with a top three result. Yeah, we had a good green flag run and just waiting to see who of the leaders was going to pit first, and Adam came down pit road, and, and we all just followed the following laps after and I think Eric took two tires and he had a, a good gap on us and I wasn't really running him down as quickly as I thought I would be with four tires and the caution came out when uh, me and the 78 got together and after that we stayed out and on the restart he got a good jump and I was able to get up alongside of him but he was able to hold me off and then Stefan there who had pitted under that that prior caution was able to run us down and at that point it was just trying to hold him off to try to keep second but once he got alongside of me it was I couldn't hold him off he was those four tires were just way too strong for me coming down to the end there was that four tire call uh, on that final caution flag period ever considered by you or was it always going to be what you did it was pretty much what I was committed to uh, one of our teammates had tried two tires Brendan there he tried two and and he said it felt pretty good, but it was a bit loose. And that was concerning for me, considering I was already fighting the rear of the car off the corner. So I decided to be conservative and go for four tires. Even though I'm not part of the, the chase points here, I uh, just still wanted to get a solid points day for our team overall and the owner points. Definitely you talk about obviously not being a contender here in the chase for the championship. Rolling forward in the season on your third start, you've shown that you're going to be a force to be reckoned with moving forward. How confident are you rolling into our next set of tracks here, Kansas, in one week's time? I feel real good there. Uh, running the high line, it's about like Darlington. You just have to be real close with not overstepping your boundaries because when you do – you get the wall there it it would pretty much destroy your car so you just have to be careful there and other than that the rest of the tracks i'm i feel pretty confident at talladega would obviously be a crapshoot but drafting's real fun there and definitely before we let you go as always sponsors and shout outs who makes it happen for you and the team I'd like to thank cody bias racing again for letting me come over here and run this series I'd like to thank moss energy Brennan for bringing me along and Gary Mercer Trucking. We'd like to thank you guys, Live Sim Racing TV, for broadcasting this and Real Sim Racing for having me along over here. And I feel congratulations on another solid top three finish. David, good luck rolling forward. Thank you. Appreciate it. And moving right along down here to Gatorade Victory Lane, where we find the championship leader the championship dominator, and for the fifth time this season, race winner, Eric Brundies. I don't know where to start except for the fact that I didn't think two tires was going to win this race, and you proved me wrong tonight. How tough were those last six laps knowing you had fresh tires behind you, wear it on that back bumper, and somehow you managed to hold them all off? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think two tires was going to win it either. <laughs> but, um, you know... We were actually feeling pretty good there on the green run. Um, you know, we had like a second lead on uh, on Stefan, who also had two tires, and then we had like a three and a half second lead on on David, who had fresh tires. Um, and I thought we were going to be okay, and then the yellow came out, and I was like, "Oh crap!" You know, I almost pitted actually. Decided to stay out and hope for another uh, another quick caution. I never really uh, never dreamed that I could hold him off for for. Uh, four or five laps there but you know david david uh you know he gave me a few breaks you know he raced me clean i i appreciate it um so yeah it was a it was a good win you know I, it's a really good track for us and uh so it was nice to uh, to get a win 
solid result for you, and you uh, take what would have been an 11-point lead into the next round, but obviously with the reset now headed to Kansas in a week's time, it all goes back to zero. Uh, what's going to be the catch for you? Uh, what's it going to take now to advance rounds and continue to hunt this championship? I mean, I think just stay up front and just keep the nose clean, you know. Um, you know, I think I think everybody's a little nervous for this next set of three you know we got two cookie cutters and a and a plate race so who knows what could happen you know and we're just going to try and you know keep offenders on it and you know run up front and stay up front and stay ahead of the um all the all the mess and melee in the back and hopefully we'll uh we'll advance we're looking to see that out of you uh before we cut you loose fifth win of the season it's not possible by yourself who makes it happen for you in the 94 team so I want to thank my teammates. Uh, I want to thank uh, Pennzoil. I'd like to uh, congratulate my teammate Nathan for advancing on to the next uh, round with us. He ran good tonight. And then I'd like to thank uh, Amy, of course, and then you guys for, for a great broadcast. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks. Congratulations going out. That's Eric Brundy's down here in Gatorade Victory Lane. Uh, Evan, he mentioned the championship standings and his teammate Nathan Little. While I'm coming back up there, uh, take us through. Who's in? Who's out? And when it all shakes down, the changes are not a plenty. As Eric Brundy's, he'll finish at the top of it. He goes on to win the final race. He'll punch his ticket into the next round. Adam Bennett feels safe. He'll finish 11 points back. Jonathan Cadell third. He will advance. Scott Simley, Rhett McBride, CJ LaVere, Dan Murray, Nathan Little. Those are the top eight. Actually, Scott Stenzel going to tie with Nathan Little, so they will all advance. Tenth place, Steve Gottschalk will advance. And now's where it gets close. Two cars were tied for the final transfer position. 59 back, or four points to the good, respectively, are Thomas J. George and Justin Wilson. They will advance to the round of 12, the contender round next week. Brennan Mercer, the first car outside looking in, will not advance. He'll finish four points out of the bubble spot, 13th in the standings. He was able to pick up a position after entering tonight, 14th, but not quite enough. Jose Gonzalez, who we thought may have a shot at this, the way it all shook out at the end, he will not advance. He'll finish about eight points out of it. Brandon and Peterson after having a rough night out he will be obviously not advancing he finished 67 back actually 74 back total from Eric Brundies and then last place obviously Jason Lester missing the last two starts will not advance so when it's all said and done it is going to be Mercer Gonzalez Peterson and Lester unable to compete in the next round which basically means that the guys who were out starting the night are exactly the guys who were out finishing the night so all that talk that we thought we were going to have in the final six laps of somebody getting in and somebody else being knocked out never came to fruition, but it looked exciting, at least on paper. With that, we're going to go down the Gary Mercer Trucking full field rundown here. Eric Brundy's again getting the win. Stefan Marinak charging on four tires, comes up one position short in position number two. David Comstock is third. Adam Benefield fourth. Corbin Hempstreet rounding out the top five. Dan Murray sixth. Jonathan Cadell seventh. Nathan Little eighth. Scott Stenzel, 9th, Steve Gottschalk, 10th. Then it's Scott Simley in 11th, CJ LeVere, 12th, Rich Jett, Mark Bratcher, Rhett McBride, 15th, 16th is John Hickman Jr., 17th, Brennan Mercer, 18th, Kevin Linden, 19th, J. Randall Watkins, and 20th, Brandon Peterson. 21st tonight was Sherry Ann Mills, 22nd, Jose Gonzalez, 23rd, Doug Roth, those two cars out of the race. 24th, Thomas J. George also out. The rest of these cars were behind the wall as well. Matt LaCrosse, 25th. Justin Wilson, 26th. Doug Wyatt, 27th. Mitch Rolo, John Wilco, James Robinson, 30th. Brian Harvey, 31st. Keith Brooks Jr., the final car who took the green flag in 32nd. Michael Woolley, Jamie Pitts, and Stephen Herring credited as DNS on the the starting grid here this evening. As we leave Dover, we have 12 contenders now. Evan Pasoko, final thoughts from the Monster Mile. We're going to have to go with our patented line here, and that is, I don't know what that is, but that happened. And surprisingly enough, and as crazy as that was at the end, no changes at the uh, cutoff, but I can imagine that that's going to be a whole different story. And We'll probably see a repeat of what happened tonight, Jacob, at the latter stages when we had to Talladega to close out the next round, but 
That's in the future. We still got Kansas to go. Two cookie cutter racetracks and then that super speedway to close off the next round. Looking forward to it. And this is the point now in the chase for the championship where you can't just be satisfied with some solid top 15, top 10 runs. You really need to start contending, no pun intended, if you want to be able to fight for this championship at Homestead. Yes, you do, and we'll carry you all the way to the end of the season. It's the end of October when RSR wraps up the chase for the championship at Homestead, but we'll be back a week from tonight, Monday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern from the Kansas Speedway for the next round of the chase for the RSR championship. Until then, for Evan Pasoko and our executive producer, Laura Lawson, I'm Jacob Seelman. Keep it off the wall, race fans, until we meet again, and we'll see you next time on the web. Good night, everybody. <laughs>